Hello everyone. So today uh, I'm conducting experiment 8, double displacement reactions. That's experiment 8, double displacement reactions. And I've written an example here on the whiteboard of a double displacement reaction. So what you see on the whiteboard is the, you have the molecular equation, that's the first equation. And it shows the reaction between sodium sulfate aqueous sodium sulfate and also lead to nitrate, aqueous lead to nitrate. That's on the left hand side of the equation. On the right hand side of the equation you have um, sodium nitrate and also lead sulfate. So double displacement reactions, it's very important to know that unlike single displacement reactions, electrons are not being transferred here. That means the charges of the metals remain the same, the charges of the polyatomic ions remain the same. Electrons are not being transferred here. These type of reactions usually produce either a solid, liquid, or gas. If you focus on the molecular equation on the right hand side, you're going to see that this reaction produces a solid, lead to sulfate, which I circle in red. So the question is, if you were to try the reaction, how do you know what the insoluble product, what the, what the solid product is composed of? What is it composed of? How do you know it's lead to sulfate, in other words? Well, for that, you must consult a solubility table, which is located on page 67 of the lab manual, or you can find one in your text. You consult the solub solubility rules, solubility table, and then you will see that lead to sulfate compounds are insoluble. And if you were to try the reaction, this reaction, you would know that the solid that you get is lead to sulfate. So what you see here as well, you see the total ionic. For the total ionic, remember that you must always, always show the charges of all the ions present in solution. However, take a look at the total ionic that I've written here on the board and focus on the right hand side and you'll see that the lead to sulfate, because it forms an insoluble product, you're not going to find ions of lead to or sulfate in solution once the reaction is complete. In other words, it's insoluble. so you cannot break it apart and you cannot show the charges when you do this when you show the total ionic on paper. The net ionic as you guys probably remember you must eliminate all the spectator ions and here as you can see the net ionic includes lead 2 and also sulfate ion because when they meet when the, these two ions combine they form an insoluble compound which is lead 2 sulfate so lead 2 sulfate is your product that's insoluble, that's your product, and as you can see we put a subscript of S. That S means it's a solid, not soluble, but rather a solid. So these type of reactions, um, they produce liquids, they produce gases, they produce solids. So what's to look for when, you, when I try these reactions today? What are you going to look for? What are you going to focus on to determine whether a reaction has taken place? Where are you going to look for bubbles, precipitate, and also uh, liquids? Uh, usually uh, I'll let you know if it, the, if the, um, reactions produce heat or they get very cold, I'll let you know. So I will try the reactions for you guys. If you see bubbles, if you see solids, you need to uh, write down the molecular, the total, the net, and you need to consult the solubility table to figure out what is that insoluble product made of, okay?